today's video yes we're still managing it but here we are another hammer film it is the snorkel from 1958 this is um very much um in those black and white film noir thrillers that um hammer went into in contrast to the technical uh, gothic horror stories they were running these and um this one fits in perfectly what a great film it is um it may be uh, very much considered like a b movie but it's it's excellent it's it's very good um it's 91 minutes long it's our standard time um Rotten Tomatoes even give it 75%, which is not bad for them. We know what they're like. Um, now, this um, was um, a double bill um, with The Camp on Blood Island, another um, Hammer 1958 film. Um, this was a World War II um, drama. Um, I think it's a Japanese prison camp. Um, yeah, so we've it's a double bill. Um, now it's written. It's got three writers uh, credited: Anthony Dawson, Peter Myers, and Jimmy Sangster again. Yes, he's always popping up, isn't he? Uh, this, I think the script um, works really well. Um, and then it's produced by Michael Carreras again. And then now in terms of um, director, we've got Guy Green. Now his real claim to fame was as the cinematographer, Oscar winning, yes, in David Lean's, yeah, David Lean, the David Lean's, Great Expectations from 1946. That's uh, John Mills. That won an Oscar. And he's the cinematographer. Um, and that's what he was really known about. Is it here as a director? He did direct some films as well. Um, so that, um, I think, is quite an important part of the look of the film. Um, definitely. It, and that it has a great... It, look to this film um now um the music <laughs> i've got to say this is francis chagrin now francis chagrin immediately it jumped out at me yes they composed composed the music for the dalek invasion of earth episode 1964 from season two Yes, we've got a Doctor Who connection. Fantastic. Yes, I'll just start put that in. Now, this um, was, as usual, um, filmed at Bray Studios. And we've got um, very important to the film, and of course, they say to the budget, um, was um, the location filming. They did, I think, two weeks filming. Uh, in Italy at the Villa del Pagola, uh, very good number, and that uh, that's in Alassio. Um, fantastic! There's so many great scenes uh, in the film that give it the look, and really, it's it, it's it's great. It's great to see that uh, in this combined with um, the interiors at Bray Studios. Fantastic. Let's look at the cast. We've got in the major starring role of the film, Peter Van Eyck, or Eek, <laughs> or something like that. Um, he plays Paul Decker. Now, he, he's fantastic as the villain. 
Absolutely. He, he just has this to a take perfect. Notable films that he was in that I found was he was in The Wages of Fear, 1953, which was a classic and, of course, was remade into, as The Sorcerer uh, in later years. Um, and also he was in uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, the John Le Carrier Cold War thriller starring Richard Burton. That was in 1965. So he, he has these various films, a lot of German films as well. Um, and yeah, he, he's, he's important to the film. Then we've got Better St. John, uh, who plays uh, Jean Edwards. She's like, I suppose, the leading heroine uh, character in this film. Um, she was interesting. Um, she was in... Corridors of Blood, 1958, which had Boris Karloff and Christopher Lee in. It was kind of a period drama thriller. And she was in that. And then she was in, I love this title, The City of the Dead from 1960, a horror film with Christopher Lee in it. Hey, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Hammer. It's great having in his hammer connections in a hammer film <laughs> yes and then i think um an important part is of the film is of course mandy miller she was a child actress who plays candy brown um she's about 14 i think she looked a bit older than maybe the uh, character is in the film this is her last film as well. Um, um, she's an interesting character, says uh, an actress. Um, she was also famous for recording in 1956, <laughs> Nelly the Elephant. Um, she was in a film which is quite an interesting film, The Man in the White Suit, again as a child, 1951, which starred Alec Guinness. And it's kind of an sci-fi kind of comedy yes I, I, I remember it um as i say this is her last role in the snorkel and i think she's very good there are one or two maybe things where um you might i don't know maybe a response as an actress would have been um different i think um with sort of well, uh, in, in, in her role, like, I think the death of a dog, for instance, um, I don't know about that scene. It's just, it doesn't quite work the way she does it, which is a shame because their relationship is good. But that's only a, just a small bit. And I think overall, um, you, they were very happy with her performance and they should be because... She's a crucial part, obviously, in the film. She, In many ways, she is the crucial part of the film. And she's good in that. And and the same, unfortunately, it was her last role. Um, then we've got um, Grigore Aslan, who is sort of a, a, a quite a familiar face. Uh, when you see him in various little roles in films, he plays this inspector. He always has that kind of... Yeah, that look. Now, he was in a very interesting film, Joe Macbeth from 1955, which was a take on Shakespeare's Macbeth, which I'm always interested in, uh, from like as a gangster kind of crime film, gangster film. What wonderful putting Shakespeare into that, yeah. And then he was in a very famous film, uh, Cleopatra from 1963, the ill-fated Cleopatra. Yes, he was in that. Then we've got, I think, um, the last cast member to mention is William Franklin. Yes, William Franklin, he plays Wilson. He's like a diplomat character who pops up, you know. Um, he was in Quatermass uh, 2, 1957. Um, but these... Um, so that's another Hammer connection. And then we've got another Hammer connection. He was in The Satanic Rites of Dracula, 1973. But of course, 
he's always so well associated and famous for his Schweppes commercial, his sh <laughs> commercial. He was just known as that in the British TV. There he is, yes. So that's the cast. And so what is this film about? Well, it's set on the Italian coast. And this writer, Paul Decker, who's unhappy in his marriage uh, for various reasons, um, he commits what he thinks and appears to be, not just things, appears to be the perfect murder. You know, he seems to go through quite a lot. And the title of the film, The Snorkel, is very much part of that um, elaborate plan. But like all elaborate plans in a drama and film, something comes along which um, threatens that. And that is in the form of his stepdaughter, Candy, with a little dog, <laughs> yes. Um, this uh, really um, is the threat, and he immediately he's an evil man, and yeah, he's really evil. And she says claims that he murdered her father, and now it's her mother. And of course, she even the dog, yes, the dog. I keep bringing up the dog, don't I? The dog's so sweet, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, so this is how the film is. And, of course, it's the classic where no one believes her. You know, um, we get this in so many films. The, the heroine, the woman, usually. Uh, this time it, um, she's a child. She's supposed to, she's supposed to be around, uh, I don't know, about 13, maybe a bit younger. She's around that age. Um, and uh, say... No one believes her. They all think she needs to go off to hospital, as they say, and see a few doctors. <laughs> That's the solution, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so that is how the story um, develops and unravels. And I have to say that the ending is absolutely amazing. I think the ending is outstanding. The problem was they thought it was too dark. They did. They thought the ending was too dark. So they had to film an extra scene at the end to make it not quite so dark. Personally, I like the total dark ending. I think the dark ending is great. Um, yeah, I mean, you always feel, yes, definitely. But Hammer gave in to ideas. Maybe the censors would have been, and there's just a feeling that they had to just not make it so dark. So... That's what they did. They filmed the scenes. So there it is. Overall, um, I absolutely love the film. Um, you know, it, it's, it wouldn't be considered the great big films. These B-movie kind of films are not. But in the context of what it's doing, of what it's trying to do, it's fantastic. And as I mentioned, with all the location filming, Hammer do a fantastic job. They're a great studio to do this and they do it so well. And um, this film is a great example. I highly recommend it. It's just, you can just sit and watch it and be entertained by it and marvel at how, how good it is. Yes. And I mean, just thought, that's why you have to love Hammer so much. It reminds you when you see a film like this. So that's it, I think, really. I'll just show you the film and well, here it is. Look at the film, The Snorkel. Fantastic. There it is. Um, there's some really nice extras on here. And there we are. There's the disc. Um, really pleased I got this. This was again on Indicator, one of those uh, sales where they did three for £20, Blu-ray, brilliant Hammer films. You can't go wrong, can you? And that's it. Yes. So, um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, then we'll let you know when I produce these videos. And you can see I've produced all sorts of reviews and things, you know, 
<laughs> so a lot of it's very nostalgia based as well but there is more else up to date stuff as well but a lot of it is nostalgia i have to admit um and if you like this video please give it a like um it all helps with algorithms as i say so more people get a chance to hopefully see this and might enjoy it and or they might not <laughs> i don't know i say it all costs no so can't say fair on that uh, and if you've got any comments, please put your comments down. I love to read your comments. I always try and reply to everyone. Yes, though sometimes the computer doesn't let me know. <laughs> but I do look, I try and uh, definitely as much as I can reply. Yes, because I do really enjoy genuinely to read what you think. I do, yes. And that's it. So all I've got to say is, I'll see you I'll see thee again.